exciting evening ahead of us as we're going to look at some of the changes and going to concentrate on the Middle East. We've looked in previous talks at the events that are happening in Europe, the great changes, and especially with now Merkel on her third term, we can expect political union to be high on the agenda. And Britain is not happy with that, that's not what she signed up to, and she is looking now towards the Middle East and towards the Commonwealth countries as the place for her trade. And we also looked at the amazing change in the Catholic Church with the new Pope and his outreach to, especially in the austerity of Europe, this humble man uh, appeals to the, uh, his uh, followers and to other people. And so we expect to see quite a surge in the influence that this man has. He has been invited to speak to the European Parliament and that will be quite an interesting uh, time. But let's say tonight what we're going to concentrate <coughs> are the events in the Middle East and as it were turn the Bible spotlight onto the happenings that are happening in that region of the country. Central to it all is the change policy as far as Britain's military are concerned. She is returning to the Middle East after an absence of over 40 years. She has flirted with Europe and found it not to her liking and her taste. And it's very exciting to Bible students to see that once again she is being drawn back into the Middle East. And as America's influence in the Middle East fades, as the Saudis and the Israelis feel very angry with Obama and his attitude uh, towards Iran, we should expect to see that Britain will be drawn into that region um, and play a more increasing role in, in that area than she has in the past. And these changes come on the back of some subtle changes in the Middle East. Uh, and they're really the outworking of the frog spirits of Revelation chapter 16. Uh, and those frog spirits are working in Egypt, in Syria, in Iran, uh, and are causing a change situation which allows this bringing in of Britain into the vacuum that America is leaving. So what we're going to look at tonight, we're going to break down into those five parts. So we start with looking at the frog spirits, which is a phrase that occurs in Revelation chapter 16. Revelation 16 covers about 200 years of history to our time and beyond our day uh, after the return of the Lord Jesus. But in the, the segment that we understand is the period that covers our day, we are introduced to three powers, which are called the dragon and the beast and the false prophet. And out of their mouths come frog-like spirits uh, from each of them. Uh, and the purpose of these frog-like spirits is to uh, gather the nations to that uh, battle of the great day of God Almighty. So in some way, th this frog-like spirit out of the mouth of these three entities is going to cause nations to want to come down upon Israel because that's where the great battle is going to be fought in the land of Israel when the nations of the world seek to drive out the Jews from their nation. And we equate these frog-like spirits, we equate the frogs to the French and the French Revolution, the spirit of liberty, equality, fraternity, which is the spirit of humanism, the spirit of democracy, the spirit of socialism, which is evil in God's arms, because that's not the thinking of man, that's the thinking of humanism, that's the thinking of the flesh. And as I say, in a strange way, it is preparing the nations for this coming contest between the thinkings of man and the thinkings of God, between the people of God, the nation of Israel, and the kingdoms of men. And we equate these uh, creatures, the beast and the dragon and the false prophet, to Europe, represented by the beast, and to the, Russia by the dragon and the false prophet, representing the papacy. And out of their mouths is coming this spirit, this uh, humanistic teaching, which ultimately leads to the invasion of Israel. There is uh, something that arouses 
anti-Jewish feelings. It, it lies so close to the surface today, doesn't it? This feeling of anti-Semitism. Anything that the Jews do, it's wrong. A great bias against them. Uh, and it will grow. And we know from other scriptures that Russia is also interested in the great wealth which is now being found in Israel. Um, but the beast and the false prophet have long had a hostility to the Jews uh, returning to their land and having their own nation, a, a nation which represents a homeland for Jewish people. For centuries the church has been teaching that the Jews are God killers. As they believe in evolution, if the Jews put Jesus to death, they're putting God to death. Therefore, the cry of God killers is something which has echoed down through the centuries. And this humanistic spirit, the frog spirits, has now reached the Middle East. And uh, it started in Tunisia, it spread to Libya and Egypt, and down into Yemen. And now we're seeing it very much manifest in Syria. And almost in a, a sea of tranquility sits Israel in the midst of all the turmoil in the Middle East. Uh, and what we're going to be looking at is looking at the situation in Egypt and the situation in Syria. Uh, and what is quite evident to the whole world now that Israel isn't the root cause of all the problems in the Middle East. Far more people have been slain through the rulers, the Arab rulers, their own rulers, than have ever been killed in the battles against the Israelis. And in making sense of what's happening in Egypt and Syria, we shall see how this drive to bring Britain back into this area it is uh, a wonderful fulfilment of what we're looking for in Bible prophecy. So, in our second part, we're going to look at Egypt. So, we used to Mubarak. He was in power in Egypt for 30 years. But the people rose up against him. The frog spirit, as it were, hit uh, Egypt and Mubarak was very rapidly swept off the scene to be replaced by uh, Morsi. Now Morsi represented the Muslim, Muslim Brotherhood which was looking to establish an Islamic state in Egypt and impose Sharia law. Uh, and when they came to power any thoughts of democracy just went out the window uh, and the people of um, Egypt found that they were suffering the Christians especially were being persecuted. About 10% of the Egyptians are uh, Christians and under the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, their churches and their businesses were set on fire and many were murdered. The long-term aim of the Muslim Brotherhood was to establish a caliphate stretching from Libya up through Egypt, up through Israel to Syria with its headquarters at Jerusalem, so that Israel would have to be driven off the scene. Uh, and that was their long-term aim, to establish this Islamic kingdom, as it were, throughout the Middle East. But, as I say, the people didn't like what they had elected, and within a year, the frog spirits had uh, bounced into Egypt again, and Morsi was rapidly taken off the scene and being replaced now by Mansour, who is the interim president, and his deputy, al Sisai, who is also the defence minister. Now these have been put into power by the military, and the military were the power that were behind Mubarak, and the military are the people that have the power in Egypt. Many of the Egyptian businesses, most of the Egyptian businesses, are run by military people or retired military people. This is uh, one of the perks of the job when you're in the military, when you're retired, well, you were given a business to run. So the military hold a lot of influence in Egypt. And the Egyptians like what they have got. Uh, Morsi has worked very hard in the three or four months that he's been in power to make great changes. And those changes were summed up by Debka about uh, this man who's <coughs> partly making his mark, that he's taken over a million-strong army from the ageing generals, 
and within three months transformed it into an effective fighting machine. One of his goals is the execution of a large-scale military offensive to eradicate Islamist terrorist networks in Sinai. This offensive is described as the biggest and most impressive counter-terrorism operation ever undertaken in the Middle East against Al-Qaeda. And also a security fence studded with surveillance cameras and sensors and guarded by mixed ground sea and air units is being set up to secure Suez Canal shipping against attack. The Suez Canal is the lifeblood of Egypt and very important actually to Britain because of the trade that goes through there. But uh, the Suez Canal was in great danger of uh, Al-Qaeda terrorists related to uh, the Muslim Brotherhood in Sinai being able to fire missiles at ships and if they could sink a ship in the Suez Canal it would bring disaster to Egypt. So taking great steps to eradicate the Muslim Brotherhood. Now, the Muslim Brotherhood have tried to rebuild their forces um, many fled into Libya, others uh, into Sinai. Uh, Hamas is very closely allied to the Muslim Brotherhood and many pockets in uh, Egypt supported the Muslim Brotherhood. I was sympathetic to them. But what was so interesting was that Israel, working with the military that they had worked with for years under Mubarak, the military, the Israeli, were able to use their spy satellites and convey information to the Egyptian military as to where the uh, militant convoys were. And so they were able to pick them off. And in a very short period of time, the, the power of the Muslim Brotherhood has been absolutely broken in Egypt. It's been outlawed as an organisation. Its newspaper has been shot down. And at the moment, the Egyptians are very busy in the Sinai region, this huge region, three times the size of Israel, which is home to many of the terrorist organisations. And Hamas in the Gaza Strip has been the lifeblood for these terrorists in the Sinai. Hamas has supplied money and arms and given shelter to these many terrorist networks that are operating there. And so, again, with Israeli help, the Egyptians have been working very hard to contain Hamas, as well as picking out the various terrorist groups within the Sinai. Uh, and what uh, we know that across the border are many unofficial tunnels which are used for smuggling food and fuel and weapons from Egypt into Gaza and smuggling terrorists in and out. And so what the Egyptians have done, they've made a security zone half a kilometre wide and stretching the whole length, clearing all the houses and the trees so that they can see any movement of people. And they have been systematically going in and destroying the tunnels that are there. And at the last count, 90% of those tunnels have been destroyed. And Hamas is in a bad way because she taxes everything going through the tunnels and that income has suddenly dried up. Uh, she is very isolated. The border from Egypt into Gaza has been closed apart from humanitarian efforts. Uh, and Hamas has been forced to uh, go to Israel. And the Israeli crossing has never been so busy for the last six years. 500 to 1,000 trucks a day are going in from Israel to supply them with food. Um, somebody with tongue-in-cheek I was reading today said Hamas has only got one friend and that's Israel. Um, but uh, it, it's, it's an absolute remarkable turnabout. It was just a matter of months. In the middle of the year, Hamas was uh, very powerful, allied to Morsi in Egypt, and suddenly it's all been swept away. Uh, and Israel, working with the military, are busy uh, clearing Sinai of the terrorists. So we can see a, a, a tremendous change. And again, what is so interesting is that the nations of the world, if Israel had been doing all of that, they would be jumping up and down, wouldn't they, and protest and flotillas from Turkey, and George Galloway will be sending convoys of relief. But Egyptians doing it, the world is totally silent. So we are seeing big changes in the region. 
and Israel is working with the Egyptians as well as the Saudis and the other Gulf states. America has said she's stopping aid to Egypt, Gulf states say, don't worry, we'll make up the difference. Uh, they hated um, Saudis and the Gulf states, as well as Israel, hated what Hamas and uh, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood stood for. They're delighted to see Morsi go, and they're determined to help Egypt to recover. And uh, we look to Egypt becoming a, a more prosperous country. So just to summarise what we've looked at in this section, looking at Egypt, there's been a fundamental change in just in the past few months. The Egyptian military are friendly to Israel. And the Muslim Brotherhood and Hamas are being greatly weakened. And the Gulf states are stepping in as the US withdraws. So in the next section, we'll look at the events in Syria.